Hi guys, um welcome back to my channel. My name is Vuvu. <laughs> this is Vivo Vena Reads and it is day 12. <laughs> it's day 12 of Vivi Arvida and if you are new on here, please consider pressing that rate subscribe button down below and joining the family and if you're a member of the fam bam welcome back fam and thank you for joining me once again on today's first chapter friday we are reading none other than you made a full of beauty death you made a full of death with your beauty by Agwege Amezi. Uh, if you are curious as to how the first chapter of this book goes do pour yourself a cup of tea and let's get into it so Bubu Vena on the score reads is an amazing book reviewer, also YouTuber. She reviews books on YouTube. And if I'm not mistaken, she also has a blog as well. So please, if for your connection with literature, get in touch with or follow at V U V U V E N A on the score reads. She is based in South Africa, and I think it is also extremely important to follow literary content creators who are based outside of who are based outside of the West and in continental Africa because they do a really good job of bridging the gap. We appreciate you, Vuvu, for bringing us turning pages and for bringing us your booktube channel. You know, this is a chance for people to actually see some people that i really enjoy please consider pressing the red subscribe button down below and if you are returning welcome back fam vuvu you're amazing thank you so much for your time cool so as per always we're going to talk about the cover i really don't know what to glean from this cover this woman or it looks like a feminine hand um with a necklace dangling from their hand i think middle finger and um the same necklace is at the back right um i love the pink i love the cover for 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 its detail and look at the spine as you can see and for its brightness i love colorful um covers and at the same time it's very minimalistic right the same painting pattern that's on the fingernails is what you see on the spine here and on the side of the the book right so bolu babulola a fave a love a love says amazing is a dream of a writer my heart soared and shook and panted okay cheer. um i'm sure that akwege needs no introduction um but i will read you a bit about them they are a transgender um author uh, whose origins are Nigerian, but I do believe they live in the United States. That's what they look like. I hope this did focus. I really do. It says, Akweke Amezi, they, them, is the author of the New York, New York Times bestseller, The Death of Vivek Oji, which was shortlisted for the Dylan Thomas Prize, the Orwell Prize, and is shortlisted for the Dublin Literary Award. Pet, a finalist for the National Book Awards for Young People's Literature, Freshwater, which was named a New York Times notable book, long listed for both the Welcome Book Prize and the Women's Prize for Fiction, and shortlisted for the Penn Hemingway Award, the New York Public Library Young Lions Fiction Award, the Lam Lambda Literary Award, and the Center for Fiction's first novel prize. That is a mouthful. And most recently, their second young novel, young adult novel, Bitter, selected as a five under 35 on re by the National Book Foundation and featured on the cover of Time as a next generation leader. They are based in liminal spaces. I feel like my lipstick is trying to betray me. Ciao okay excuse that let us re read from the synopsis it says it's the opportunity of a lifetime Faye is about to be get, to be given the chance to escape the city's blistering heat for a dream island holiday poolside cocktails beach sunsets and elaborate meals and as the sun goes down on her old life our heroine also might just be ready to open her heart to someone new the only problem is she's falling for the one man she absolutely can't have. 
<laughs> okay, Faye. Drama. Okay, let's go. Chapter one. Okay. Ooh, this is not even my book, and I think I just did it with some little thing. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Chapter one. Milan was the first person Faye had. Okay. Let me just say off the bat, okay. I was not prepared for the first sentence and therefore a uh, PG, yeah? Parental guidance is advised for the rest of this first chapter Friday reading, okay? Because clearly we are we are going in from the start, yeah? Cool. Milan was the first person Faye had fucked since the accident. They hooked up in a bathroom at a Memorial Day house party in Bushwick, with Faye's glass of Prosecco spilling into the sink and Milan's large hands sliding behind her thighs as he lifted her onto the bathroom counter. Speckled towels stretched around them, washed bloody in the light of the red bulb, Someone had screwed into the ceiling and a linen shower curtain hung around the bathtub, thick with monstera leaves. Faye threw her head back, his mouth on her throat and her long pink braids dripping over the faucet, the tips dragging against... Guys, I'm so nervous reading this thing because I'm like, is it appropriate? But <clears throat> we are here now and we have committed, okay? The chips dragging against the draining bubbles of her drink. Tell me if you need to slow down, Milan said, his voice all tangled up, busy with want. I know we just met or whatever. He said it as if it could matter or as if it was a reason to stop instead of a reason to go even faster. Faye had first seen him back on the rooftop when the party was still in full force around them. She'd liked the way his eyes followed her as she walked, how tall he was, how broad. Her best friend Joy had leaned in, linking her arm with Faye's. Phew, check out those thighs, she'd whispered. He, he thick and, okay, fine. I think there's gonna be a lot of swearing in this one. Bear with me. He thick as fuck. I'ma need him to turn around so I can see that ass. Faye had rolled her eyes. So glad you don't have a dick, she said. You'd be yo I'm child. You'd be a fucking menace. I don't know. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be particularly interested in this ass if I had a dick, Joy replied. I take that back. You're already a menace. Faye snuck uh, another look at the thighs in question. Besides, you can just use a strap, you know. Nah, it's not my, it's not the same. I want to feel him squeeze around me. Joy had, hey, Joy. <laughs> Joy had flexed her fingers into a fist to illustrate the grip and Faye stifled a laugh, her braids sweeping across her collarbone. Milan glanced in their direction, catching Faye's eye and smiling at her from across the roof. Faye had already decided who she wanted to be that night so she stared right back at him unabashed drinking in his terracotta skin skin and dark copper beard when he nodded to his boys and started walking towards her joy squealed and vanished leaving the two of them alone faye wanted to cut through any potential small talk just slice it away neatly so she touched the buttons of milan's shirt as soon as he was close enough your heart, she said, before he could even open his mouth. Are you seeing anyone? A flicker of surprise had crossed his face, but Milan recovered quickly. Nah, he replied, tipping his head to one side as he held her eyes. You? For a moment there was the scream of tires and the mad chime of broken glass, the soft petals of white lilies and a clod of dirt breaking apart in Faye's hand, but she brushed it all aside like smoke single she said in return stepping right into his personal step personal space he smelled of rain and bergamot 
and how do they say it ready to mingle it would have been a corny line if she wasn't so beautiful and Faye knew it knew how to part her lips in their full wine red how to look up at him for from under thick black lashes how to inject a lifetime of suggestion in her voice it was all a game a simple formula and there was nothing wrong with using these cards she'd been dealt besides if she looked closely enough at the whole thing none of it really mattered he was a different kind of beautiful and that was enough Although she and Joy had been drinking since brunch, Faye wasn't drunk yet. Just tipsy enough to choose him to dive back into the deep end with his body. From the way this terracotta stranger had placed his hand on her lower back, welcoming her against him, he seemed to be on board with her plan. Joy was somewhere by the bar, surely restraining her glee as at seeing Faye make such a blatant move. I'm Milan, the stranger had said. His wide and delicious mouth curving into an amused smile. Do we really need names? Faye had thought, but she smiled back anyway. Her hands um, splayed against his chest, his heart galloping steadily beneath her palm. I'm Faye. Milan had glanced around the roof. Wanna get out of here? Nice. He was playing along perfectly. No hesitation, no, co no coyness. Not too far. I came with my girl. He'd not, he'd nodded and looked back at her. They were close enough for his breath to brush against her skin, for her to see the dark flakes in his brown eyes as he took in her face, his gaze lingering on her mouth. When he spoke again, his voice had dropped low and rough. Downstairs? Faye had raised an eyebrow, hiding how he his lust was like a match igniting hers. He wanted her badly enough to ask only the important questions. You're solution oriented. oriented. I like that. Milan took her hand and they left the rooftop, squeezing past people to the stair on the stairs and then ducking around a corner as he led her into the bathroom. Faye watched the muscles in his back move under his shirt as he closed and locked the door, then tracked the caution in his eyes as he turned back to her. So, he said, giving her space, not assuming. It was sweet. It was so unnecessary. Faye did not need to think about this. She put her drink down on the counter and pulled her blouse off over her head. Her pink braids... Faye... Her pink braids getting briefly caught in the black cotton, leaving her breasts covered in nothing but a thin bralette, small gold rings pressing through the sheer mesh. Definitely PG in any guys, ne? Otherwise, yo, chapter one. The stranger, Milan, inhaled sharply, the want in his eyes going aflame. You're fucking beautiful, he growled, still holding himself back. Your skin is just... It just drinks up the light. Faye smiled and said nothing. Instead, she stepped up to him, pulling his face down to hers, his mouth down to hers, his willing and ready tongue down to hers. He seized her greedily, his hands digging into her flesh, his hips pressing an iron length against her stomach. Faye felt like a monster and a traitor, but it was fine. It had to happen. It was precisely what she had come here for. The accident had been five years ago, which felt like both forever and yesterday to Faye. She'd been living up in Cambridge near her parents' house, but she couldn't handle the road afterwards, couldn't handle driving or the way her mother's eyes were weighted with pain and pity every time she saw every time they saw each other so Faye had moved down to new york because if she was a monster then so was the city glorious and bright and everlasting eating up time and hearts and lives as if they were nothing she wanted to be consumed by the relentless volume of a place so much louder than her, she was a place where her past had and her pain could drown into 
in the noise okay here fair you could keep her name and her unruined face yet become someone else someone starting over someone who wasn't haunted no one in new york cared about the vintage of the sadness tucked behind her eyes and in the small corners of her smiles she didn't um have to drive and she could cry on the train and no one would look no one would care because she didn't matter and it was honestly such a relief to stop mattering Faye moved into a brownstone apartment with Joy, her best friend from college, and paid for it with the life insurance money. Trying to ignore how ghoulish that felt, everyone was said it's what he would have wanted, but she was fairly sure he would have wanted to live. Most people didn't get what they wanted. Faye didn't want the money, but she needed it. That obscene check, and maybe she even needed the accompanying guilt it was a punishment that felt necessary like balance he was dead and what was she doing being alive making art how frivolous she and joy lived on a green and sunny block around the corner from baba yasuf's botanical and the trini shop that sold du doubles at inconsistent hours they smoked joints on their fire escape and Joy convinced Faye to dye her hair pink. You're in Brooklyn now, she said. Try a different look. It's not a big deal. There was something in the air that first summer that made Faye play along. She rented out a studio on the next block and made her work there. Grotesque as it was, nothing she painted or stitched together could bruise her the way her own life had. Faye began to hope that her past would fade, thinning out like an old song, turning her sadness into just a vague layer under her skin. All that could, all that would be left was its residue, giving her a certain spicy and inexplicable melancholy that some men could smell. It made them want to save her. Faye knew it was already too late for all that so she dipped and ducked away from their hands their hungry mouths she liked the city as an entity better it didn't care who you were or what you damage or what damage or what your damage was it ate everyone up indiscriminately indiscriminately wow because yeah once the full summer heat hit in a wave of wet air Faye felt like she was being seduced into being a stranger and she found that she wanted nothing more she and joy rented a car and drove down to Rees beach lying out topless in the sun under layers of coffee and coconut oil until their skin darkened into deep brown and gold joy shaved her head on a whim and tattooed a black dot on each lower lid eyelid Faye pierced her nipples and braided her bubblegum hair down to the small of her back they turned off the news and ordered edibles instead redecorating their apartment with plants instead started making pizzas on saturdays instead there was nothing to stop them from being whatever they wanted do you think we're having a quarter life crisis joy had asked once while rolling up a joint in their living room First of all, we are a few years too old for that, Faye had replied. Second, I think we're just figuring out how to survive a world on fire. That's it. That it's okay to be alive. Joy had looked over with a soft smile. I'm proud of you, she said. I know it isn't easy for you to say that. She wasn't strong. It wasn't easy for Faye to do a lot of things. But now, with Milan kissing her against the bathroom mirror, Faye found that it didn't it didn't quite catch in her chest the way she thought it would. She was a monster and a traitor, but only if someone else was alive and he wasn't. She had to remind herself that he wasn't. Faye still felt wrong, yes, but it in an unfamiliar way, which made sense because she had become a stranger and it takes time to turn into someone new if she let out if she let go and existed only here and now without a past it was actually easy it was fun in fact i'm serious milan gasped seizing air in between their desperate kisses his palms hot against her thighs 
We can stop at any point. Tell me. Bess thumped through the walls and Faye unbuttoned his jeans, sliding her hand inside. Milan had small diamonds in his ears and his breath was ragged as he looked down at her. Don't stop, she murmured in his mouth and Milan hissed in a sharp breath as her fingers wrapped around him and pulled him out. Are you sure, he asked, and Faye tried not to roll her eyes. Such a gentleman, she mocked, keeping her tone soft. Then she kissed him again, slipping her tongue between his teeth as she tightened her grip. God, he had girth. Hi, Faye. <laughs> Part of me doesn't want to finish this first chapter, okay? Because I don't know how appropriate this is, but we are here now. Okay, we are here. Milan made a torn and rough sound. Then shoved her skirt up to her waist, his hands eating her skin. Faye heard a rip and she laughed in delight as he tore off her lace thong. Her laugh melted into a soft gasp as he tossed the delicate scrap aside, sliding his fingers inside her. Let me make that up to you, Milan growled. He curled his fingers forward and Faye cried out, her back arching. Milan laughed into her mouth, still hard and pulsing in her hand. She had forgotten what it, this felt like, the frenzy, the way lust could almost hold a shape within her, something big and loud and so very demanding. It felt rushed, dangerous, exactly how she wanted it, too quick to think, too fast, too hard, too wet to remember anything or anyone. She pushed away his hand and pulled the tip of him closer reckless hold up he said i have a Faye wrapped her legs around his hips it's fine reckless but shh here she brushed him against <laughs> she brushed him against her slick self and milan swore in the back of his throat as his common sense slid away oh you're bad he whispered pushing into her slowly committed to their mistake. It was something she was beginning to like about him, the way he made decisions, abandoning uncertainty once the choice was done. Her mind spun off as he stretched his way in, floating away on sharp pleasure. Faye bit down on his shoulder as he sank into her and whimpered as he started to pull back out. Torture Cautiously slow. Fuck, it had been so long. How had she even made it this far? No wonder Joy kept telling her to get laid. Faster, she gasped, and Milan chuckled. Ask nicely. Oh, you fucking bastard. He pulled all the way out, and Faye breathed, his breath hitched, the ache suddenly roaring and furious. Ask nicely, he said, his smile wicked, and I'll give you everything you want. She needed him not to stop. She didn't understand. There were so many things she was keeping at bay. Please, she said, giving in. Please, fuck me. I will. Guys, I should have probably read the first chapter of this book <laughs> before attempting this video, okay? All right. I'm glad that's out of the way. Um, I'm thinking of abandoning ship. I don't know, I don't think I'm comfortable. But I think that was enough of a teaser, don't you guys think? I think so. This is the first ever on First Chapter Fridays, but I think it has to be done. Otherwise, if this did intrigue you in any way and didn't make you uncomfortable in any way, do let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of this First Chapter Friday, First Chapter Friday reading of You Made a Full of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Amazi. I'm so sorry I couldn't read the full chapter, okay? I just don't know if it's on brand and I don't know if I'm comfortable, but I will put up the uncertainty for you guys, okay? Because I trust y'all. You guys will let me know. Otherwise, once again, thank you so very much for choosing me. Bye now.